Well, I want to welcome then uh, uh, Per Olaf Olstrand. Uh, thank you for coming to chat with us a little bit today. And uh, we're just putting together a, uh, a video series of uh, some of the leaders in sports medicine and exercise science. And you're certainly one of those. And uh, one of the first things I wanted to talk to you about was your research in, in exercise physiology in Sweden and uh, when you got started in that and some of the things you were looking at. And then eventually when you published your textbook of work, Physiology. So uh, if you could comment a little bit on that, that would be great. The professor in physiology in Stockholm, Erik Ove Christensen, he came from Denmark. And one of his mentors was August Krug, mm -hmm. who had the Nobel Prize 1920. I had a pleasure to meet him quite a few times. And then when I finished, graduated at the College of Physical Education, Erik Ove Christensen wanted me to join his staff. And, uh, the first project was to study maximum oxygen, well, response to submaximal, maximal, and exercise. And we were the first to realize that about 50% of the population are females. Mm -hmm. So altogether, particularly 1947, 40, 49, some 230 subjects. 50% women, the youngest four years of age, oh, wow. boys and girls. And there were the classic paper was by Sid Robinson, mm -hmm. published 1939, his thesis, but only males. Mm -hmm. And um, to have those four-year-olds to run maximum four or five minutes, it was a little bit. <laughs> and then we needed for the lactate minimum 0.5 milliliter of blood. And those milk out those tiny figures. Yeah. I didn't feel very well. For a well. four-year-old, yeah, yeah. But anyway, and then we used the, certainly the classical Douglas Begg method and the Hordain apparatus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hordain first apparatus, he had 1898, I think. Mm -hmm. And Douglas Begg, 1911. And um, just interesting, I sent my thesis, published 1952, to Douglas, Professor Douglas in Oxford, and um, said that thanks to his technique, I could collect expired air for my mm -hmm. volunteered guinea pigs. Right. <laughs> Did and he re respond back? Uh, to yes, you? I met him, I think, 1955, 56, and he showed his lab and some of his original bags, and he Thank you for sending the mm -hmm. thesis. Oh, that was nice. And um, to step to this textbook business, I have always been interested in teaching. Maybe a little bit uh, difficult sometimes. I remember questionnaire for the students, and someone said that there may be one teacher worse than P.O. Ostern. I wondered just where. <laughs> but many of them have been very positive. Uh -huh. And then when Erik Ove Christensen was at the Lancaster Hospital in Philadelphia, I think it was 1962, 63, mm -hmm. and had, there was Professor Kora Rudal. And my wife and I, we had been in Berkeley, California, to do research on high altitude, White Mountain, actually 14,000. Wow. 200 feet. We stayed there for one month mm -hmm. and did exercise. Sierra Nevada, and the standard comment was to the army people, is there any atom bomb scheduled for tomorrow? Mm -hmm. If they said yes, is it a big one? If it was before sunset, sunrise, mm -hmm. the whole sky. I have photos of the mushrooms. Wow. It is amazing. Until the end of the 50s, this was 1957, mm -hmm. they fired in the Nevada Desert. Anyway, Corey Rudol had, had quite good proceedings, various meetings, 
published by McGraw Hill. Mm -hmm. And without me knowing it, they signed a contract with my name on the contract. Oh. <laughs> but that started writing. And uh, I am interested in integrative physiology, but a little bit tricky reading about muscle, mm -hmm. central nervous system for a chapter, circulation, respiration, etc. So it took a couple of years. So the manuscript was clear in 1968. And it's an award I took both to American Physiological Society meeting in Washington. Mm -hmm. And then it was published in 1970. Okay. And then new edition 1977 and the third edition 1986. Now, it's the fourth edition where I have been very passive. Mm -hmm. I was not willing to work so hard. Yeah, yeah, it's getting thicker and thicker too. Yeah, <laughs> but it is um, very positive. It has been translated into eight languages. Oh, really? Wow. I That's remember great. I met, uh, meeting in Taiwan, one professor from China, and he gave me the textbook translated, of course, without any permission from <laughs> right. Macro Hill. Right. And then uh, when I attended the first meeting, American Court of Sports Meetings, I'm not sure, I was became honorary, what do you say, a member, mm -hmm. 1973. Mm -hmm. And to think back, I have met six of the founders, Louis Bishop and uh -huh. uh, Joseph Wolf. Uh -huh. Actually, the Joseph Wolf lecture I have given and I could tell that when my wife and I were in Philadelphia, we were invited to Joseph Wolf's clinic mm -hmm. outside Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and very interesting to meet him. Yeah. And then Curator Tom, and... Um, How about Dill? Many times. Yeah. I was invited to his 80th birthday mm -hmm. in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and then we met quite a few times mm -hmm. and then it was but he was not one of the founders no that's correct. but that was Ernst Jokl yeah, yes which I met many many times mm -hmm. he was a master in organizing meetings mm -hmm. all over the world mm -hmm. and giving the introductory yeah I <laughs> I visited him in uh, Lexington oh, yeah uh, it is I have been in his home there yeah I have too and mm -hmm. visited and there. then Leonardo Larson was one, and oh, yeah. Otto Steinhaus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it has been uh, very stimulating to attend this meeting and meet the exercise mafia in a positive <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <term. laughs> That's a good and way to describe it. <laughs> having a meeting old friends and new friends. Mm -hmm. It's growing. Uh, a lot of young people. Uh, Yes. Newer, newer people, but doing a lot of good work. So much of research now and founded by NIH is micro microbiology, mm -hmm. and um, to apply for studies on physical activity is not too easy. Mm -hmm. But someone has to put all those lifeless pieces into an intact human body. Yeah, and sure enough. Physical activity in one way or the other touches every corner in your body. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, I mentioned August Krug. Mm -hmm. He published 1919, was awarded the prize 1920. But he was not particularly interested in sport, but physical activity mm -hmm. gave a perfect chance to study respiration, nutrition, and um, circulation, just mm -hmm. name it. Mm -hmm. And my mentor, Christensen and Hansen, they published 1939 about carbohydrate loading. Three days mixed diet, three days hating carbohydrate, three days on fat. And after the, 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 the control was about 120 minutes mm -hmm. until exhaustion. Carbohydrate loading, 180 minutes, mm -hmm. and fat, 90. And I was asked to be some sort of advisor for the Swedish 
national teams cross country skiing, which have given me a chance to attend Olympics in Cortina, Spo Valley, Seefeld. Nice. And I knew about carbohydrate loading. The study was published in German, mm -hmm. Scandinavische Archiv für Physiologie. And also they proved how important it was that to refill with glucose concent uh, drinks. So I had the skiers to show, particularly for the 50 kilometer race, where they, they want to have these At glucose in intervals. Yeah. yeah, about every fifth, sixth, seventh kilometer. Of course, they didn't want it in the midst of a downhill. Right. Right. And I boast at the Olympics, 1964, Sweden had 50 kilometers, the gold medal, silver medal, and a few seconds from the bronze medal. Mm -hmm. But then 1963, a friend at the same time at the medical school, he invented the muscle biopsy needle. And then he, Jonas Bergström and Erik Hultman came to our department. And that was particularly Bengt Saltin and mm. Norwegian colleague Lars Hammerson. And they repeated the 1939 protocol. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And just proved that it was correct. But now it was published in English. Mm -hmm. And um, in a way, I didn't learn anything new more than they could study the carbohydrate, the glycogen store directly. Right in the muscle. Yeah. It, yeah. And in the 1939 study, they calculated from oxygen uptake and respiratory quotient. Mm -hmm. And then we were quite early, I think, to study cardiac output in men and women, 11 and 12 respectively, I think, mm -hmm. with the cardio green method. And, uh, when, when you went to uh, uh, Berkeley mm -hmm. uh, with the mountain mm -hmm. study, uh, were you involved with Horvath? No, not no. at that time. Uh, no. We had met many times and uh -huh. actually he came to, I think the year after we left Lankan Hospital in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. He joined that staff. Okay, okay. And. Um, We have had interest in high altitude studies and that was Hovi Christensen. Mm -hmm. So he was able to build a low pressure chamber in our new department. And it was interesting, the air forces were not too interested mm. until Christensen went after the Second World War to US. And where they said that the pilot had to study their mask. Mm -hmm when exposed to, in a safe place, mm -hmm. in a low pressure chamber, mm -hmm. not on flight. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can uh, take that out maybe, but it's interesting at 12,000 meters, then at 8,000 meters, it is about 5,000 feet, I think. They took the mask off. Mm -hmm. And then they were writing down 193, 86, 79, subtracting seven each time. Mm -hmm. And then until they fainted. Oh, oh. And then quickly the mask on. And many of them were not aware of that they had been unconscious. But showing them what they have done mm -hmm. at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something was wrong. Yeah. 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 Did you uh, 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 work <coughs> with uh, or know uh, uh, do things with Balky mm -hmm. and uh, some of the things that you uh, remember about well, him. We have met uh, many positive times together. And at the meeting in Aspen, Colorado, we had the comment, here we are with three artificial hips oh. walking in the mountain. <laughs> he had two, <laughs> I had one. <laughs> no, he was very positive. And did, did you do a lot of skiing? I know he did. Yes. Uh, uh, of course, being with our Cross country yeah. skiers yeah. in at so many occasions. Mm -hmm. And um, Bruno Balke and Ulrich Luft mm -hmm. were taken 
by the US troops from Germany to United States. Mm -hmm. So Balke introduced his treadmill test in a Luft, good researcher in um, Albuquerque, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, uh, Ernst Jokel came from Germany, too, didn't he, Ra around that time, I guess? Yes, and as I said, we met many yeah. times. Now He's, he collected stamps with sport mm -hmm. booties. Yeah, and medals. <laughs> Uh, I've oh. seen seen those at his mm -hmm. at his house. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you've have you had a lot of graduate students over the years work with you well, and go well, out into the well, field? Ben Saltine. Was he was yeah. one of your students? Well, uh -huh. Bjorn and quite a few on the mm -hmm. that have been positive. And, mm -hmm. uh, then about lecturing, a student asked how many places. And I made some quick, I have a map, oh. but it was only 65 different countries. Oh, my heavens. <laughs> when, uh, so how, how long have you been uh, in, in uh, higher education, so to speak, teaching? And I am uh, still at the, going to the department to normally. And what university is it? Well, that is, it is. Um, University College of Physical Education, they name it. Mm -hmm. And for a period of time, our department was part of Karlinska Institute. And it was very interesting. For 12 years, I was in the assembly giving the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. Mm -hmm. And that was very stimulating. Yeah, oh, yeah. And what, what city is this? In Stockholm. Stockholm. So it is Karolinska Institute, okay. which Alfred Nobel decided that that the institute should give the prize in physiology or medicine. I heard today someone present and medicine, which was wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you um, meet uh, Larry Rao? From we are very good friends. Yeah, he's a friend of mine. I met. University of Washington uh, in the medical school where he just retired mm -hmm. there. And yes, he had his thesis in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. with Henry. I met Henry Taylor many times mm -hmm. and also Sid Robinson. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what is interesting is Sid Robinson and Dill measured oxygen up, peak oxygen uptake in Don Lash, who had the world record, mm -hmm. two miles. And it was 81.5 milliliter. Mm -hmm. Our best skier, 82.5. Wow. Yeah. the 96. 83.5. Not much higher than Don Lush mm -hmm. in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. So they run much, much faster. But the aerobic motor has not changed very much. Mm -hmm. In, in that time. No. Yeah. And that is interesting. And yeah. Apparently, before maybe they could run at 80% of the maximum, and now they run at 110, yeah. 120. Yeah. What, um, one thing I want, wanted you to comment on or to think about was um, the, the kinds of organizations that are in Europe, or specifically Sweden, uh, compared to the American College of Sports Medicine and journals too. Mm. I mean, you, you have outlets there, but you also come to these meetings a lot. Yes. And how do, the, how do those two uh, compare? Well, I have never been so interested in committee works. Yeah. But the Eastern European Association, I think is the name, for sports medicine. And it's we are Swedish sports medicine, but in Sweden there is no special education for physicians interested in oh. sport. Oh. And there is always so often the complaint that the top soccer player some problem mm -hmm. Sunday on Monday taken to hospital treatment 
and there may be long waiting lists for others. Mm -hmm. But I think that those orthopedic surgeons interested in sport, they have developed this technique, what do you name it, Gwyn and uh, Miro. Or arthroscopic. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With little trauma. Mm -hmm. And the top athletes want to come back as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. And that has stimulated and promoted that type of technique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you come to these meetings quite frequently. And you've I been try at least. You've been coming to these meetings since 1970s? Yes, with exceptions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I have um, good friends. One is Henry Blackburn, who was uh, he's in Minneapolis, uh, mm -hmm. expert, he said, et cetera, and he plays clarinet. So mm. when I happened to be in the audience, I was very honored becoming an honorary member of American College of Cardiology. Mm -hmm. And Henry Blackburn, he had his education in New Orleans, so he invited his friends to Preservation Hall in New Orleans. Oh, nice. And when Sweet Emma had to go to the ladies' room, they allowed me to take over the piano. Oh, really? Yeah. Twice. <laughs> Did, was, I cannot play, but I just pretend. <laughs> was he at Tulane uh, in New Orleans? Did he, uh, was it at Tulane University? No, he was, uh, had his medical education, and there he learned, uh, met the preservation, Shenhorn musicians. I see. But I he see. was not a uh, physician practicing oh, there. Oh, I see. He, up in Minneapolis. Min Minneapolis, I but see. He sponsored them and was very active in promoting their. Their performance. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, what about um, the. Um, ha have you worked with, uh, co authored anything with uh, people here in America? Uh, on any articles or anything like that, or have you done not, most of it on your own? Not any co-authors here, but in the quite a few proceedings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have Have you uh, continued to work with, uh, or for a while, with uh, Bengt Saltine? He uh, had a chair in Copenhagen, and then he came back to Stockholm and had promised in a way to stay, but after two years he back to Copenhagen. I see. But we have quite frequent contacts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then about teaching, I was in Taiwan last year. Here I had an invitation now to go to a meeting in Mexico, mid of October. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, my wife's health is not good. Mm -hmm. and that is priority one, yeah. to did, stay at home. Did you make this trip by yourself? No. Yeah? <laughs> You're pretty strong. For <laughs> and I could uh, fix good care for my wife in uh, something like a nursing home. Mm -hmm. But she's brilliant here. Mm -hmm. But our daughter also is working there. Oh, good. That's my nice. daily telephone course, it is under control. Yeah, good. Well, that's, that's encouraging. But that uh, limits. Yeah. I'm traveling. Yeah. And I have had enough. Yeah. But in an interesting period was in the 1960s. I was in the Kalahari Desert studying the Bushmen, mm -hmm. the last of the Stone Age people, mm -hmm. he said. And it was, I didn't bring a photo. I had a photo with a Bushman and his fellow on a monarch cycle I mm -hmm. Did you publish a lot of the data that you collected on those uh, in the Not 60s? so much, but the, the cholesterol level was about one third mm -hmm. what we mm -hmm. think normal. Yeah. And uh, they had a fantastic, if I name it physical condition, why walking 5, 10, 15, 20 kilometers per day mm -hmm. did not necessarily love walking, but they hated to be hungry. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, in uh, the Congress in Seoul, there was a forum devoted how to select, find the candidates to become top athletes. Mm -hmm. And East Germany 
was the country mm. too. Yeah. And then after the, the Congress, I two European championships, one world championship in 1980s, out of 46 gold medals, East German ladies had 42. Wow. The men, three. And in the Seoul Olympics, out of 15 gold medals from East Germany, 11. In Barcelona, East, West Germany together, one female mm. gold medal makes one slightly suspicious. Yeah, of what was going on, huh? And of course, anabolic steroids is more effective in women than in men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember when that and was happening. Unfortunately, we, our department was behind blood doping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were interested in the oxygen transport system and manipulated, for instance, hemoglobin content. So was La Severin uh, uh, La Severin uh, a runner? Wasn't he a, a Swede? Uh, wasn't he involved in one of the big uh, blood doping scandals? No, La Severin from yeah. Finland. But yeah, I, I, Finland, I, I yeah. think he was clean. Oh, okay. No, but our object was taking out 800 milliliters of blood after one month, reinfusing the red cells, and that improved oxygen uptake, okay. and, but we were not paid by the Swedish Olympic Committee. It was basic research, mm -hmm. but unfortunately. It got used yeah. Yeah, the wrong way. And now it is the erythropoietin, and mm -hmm. the top athletes and 40s often one step ahead of the researchers. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that happen. Oh, gee, we're, anyhow, um, we're just about out of time here. I've almost run out of questions as well. <laughs> and I run out of answers. Okay. <laughs> well, I thank you for coming. Uh, it was nice of you to Good stop by. I appreciate it very much. Okay.